Hello there, folks. Hey, this quick video today is going to talk about a couple things for calibration of a Redline HMI and a touch test. So you might have a situation where you got an HMI from running, and you notice you click on a few things on the real screen, and for some reason the finger uh, alignment to where you're clicking doesn't really register as well. Then maybe it's off a little bit or something. So there's a couple things you can do uh, with that uh, database to try to fix that problem. But one of those features is to add a calibration page. So here I've got a database open and running and I'm going to go over here to the right and I'm going to go ahead and add a new page and I'm going to call this one calibration. So on the calibration page over here on the right side I'm going to go to primitives on the right side and I believe if you slide all the way down into system primitives go into the category called system primitives and here, of course, you've got some of our higher uh, cable primitives. But if you slide down a little bit, pretty much to the bottom, you're going to find that there's a couple of uh, primitives in here that we're going to use in this video. One's called touch calibration, and I think I'll use the touch tester as well. But for right now, let's worry about the touch calibration. So I'm going to drag this guy out here like this, and you see it takes on the whole screen. Okay, so that's the calibration thing. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to right-click on here anywhere. And I'm going to go to Properties. I just want to investigate. So you got two tabs with this thing. You've got your Actions tab and the Show tab. Of course, the Show tab is, uh, you could use a situation to pop this up maybe or something. But in this case, on the Actions tab, you can see that you got On Success and you got On Failure. So you can have it execute a few things. I'm going to leave that blank for now just to see what happens. And I'll come back to uh, that feature. Okay, so I got that on there. Um, let's go over here to my main page. And on my main page, I'm going to add a button that takes me to the calibration page just for testing. So over in the right side of primitives, I'm going to go to my home directory here. And uh, in core primitives, if you slide all the way down to the bottom, second row from the bottom, middle column is the bevel button. Of course, if you click on it one time, you get a bunch of different colors, versions of it. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm going to grab a, a green one here, drag it out here. I'm going to right click on this guy, go to properties. And I'm just going to change the name of this to Calibration. Don't worry, it doesn't fit. We'll fix that in a second. And if I go to the Action tab, on the Action tab, when I push this, I want to go to the Calibration page. So I'll hit the pull down right here, and I'll choose the option, Go to Page. And then down here for the Target page, hit the pull down. And I want to select that page that I named Calibration. That's why I named it, so it would be easy to find here. So I'll choose Calibration. Click the OK, and I'm going to leave it as a normal page. That's all default. I'll click the OK button. And of course, now you can see if you zoom in, I got the uh, hazard signs because I, I need to make this guy a little bigger. And of course, there's a little yellow dot here. You can always use that to adjust the bevel edge, if you will. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and download this to my little screen. And let's see what happens here, team. I seem to have the slowest internet access here at this hotel, so it seems to take forever to download. All right, there it is done. Okay, so we'll wait for our page to reload here. All right, so here I am on the page. One more thing, well, I might get another video, but uh, you see how I got the border here. And if I go back and do a refresh, refresh my session, go back to here, I still got this. Oh, there, I must have fixed it. Okay, I'll, I'm going to do the video on that. But anyway, so here. If I go click the calibration button, this is what shows up on the real screen. And of course, I'm using the web browser for this uh, video, but the same thing. So in this case, you're going to click on these squares on the real screen to calibrate the X, Y coordinates of this thing. So you're going to go through and click on these as such. And when it gets done, you're going to get either calibration was successful or it failed. But here's the problem right now. How do I get back to where I was? Because it passed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Crimson. And I'm going to go to my calibration page. I'm going to right click once again on this uh, primitive called Touch Calibration. Go to Properties. And up here on Success, I might want to go back to the page. So I'm going to move this over here. And I, my original page is page 2. I didn't change that here. So right here in On, su on Success, I'm going to type Go To page, open parentheses, the name of that page, and fortunately you have to type this because I can't really copy or 
or uh, cut it and paste or drag it in here. So I'm going to go to page, the name of that page, which is page two. Hit enter, turns blue, it took it. So that's good. On failure, you could have it go to another page to navigate away uh, or stay there. Maybe I will, I'm going to do this. I'll put go to page. Uh, I said this is Gator. I want go to, hold on here. Open parentheses. And let's say this time I go to page one, for instance. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and try this out, team. I'll save it, download it. We'll see what happens here. Okay, so finally done downloading. Go back to our web page here. So let's go ahead and hit the cut touch calibration. Let's try this again. We'll make a successful pass with this, and then we'll try a bad situation, see what happens. Oops, I'm going to click there. There we go. So this one should pass. Let's see. One, two, three. Boom. Successful. And there it went back to the page. Awesome. That's exactly what I want to do. Let's try the same thing, team. And let's make this one fail. I'll be clicking here. I'll click there. Click there. I can't seem to line up my hand-eye coordination. I purposely have not clicked in any of the red buttons. Really? <laughs> Maybe it's the web page. But uh, anyway, I think if you did that in the real thing, it would go to page two or this uh, page one, which was this one. But uh, anyway, so that's... Uh, calibration thing you can use that to try to fix your uh, pointer issue another thing I want to show you here is I'm going to create another page and I'm just going to call this one touch test and I want to show this other thing we have here so I'm going to call this touch test and over here on the right I'm going to go to the home directory of my primitives once again I'll slide down go into the system primitives and in the system primitives slide all the way down here's the touch calibration that we just used over here is the touch tester. So I'm going to drag this guy out here, the touch tester. I'll show you what this does. And once again, I want to right click, go to properties just to see what's on here. So this thing has a figure. You can pick the color of the background and has a show tab. Doesn't have any pass fail or anything. It's just a touch tester. I'm going to show you how this works with this guy uh, on this one. So this thing, uh, well, let me show you how it works first and I'll come back to how to fix something so let me download this to here see what happens here just realized something team i forgot to put a button on the main page to get here so when this gets done with its download uh, i'm going to go add a button here so i forgot all about that so let me go back to page two here and let me go to my home directory primitives slide all the top go back into core primitives i go down here to the bottom second row bottom bevel button i'll click one time and uh, let's call, let's grab a different button, bring it out here like this. I'm going to right click on this guy, go here to the text, and I'm going to type touch tester, for instance. And then when I hit the action tab and hit the pull down and say go to page, hit the pull down here, I need to tell it to go to the touch test. Okay, so there we go. Of course, now I'm going to make this guy a little bigger. And like I said, you can use this green or yellow dot there to make the border. I want to move that guy a little bit so I don't have a little conflict of touch area there. All right, let's try this again. Let me save it. Let me download. Sorry about that, team. I totally forgot about that. Okay, so that's done downloading. Let's go over here to our thing. So I'm going to click on the touch tester, and it brings up this blank page. And the touch tester is kind of cool because you can pretty much just click everywhere. And I believe it'll keep track of like the last 10 clicks. So you can use this to test a zone. I recently had a person say that uh, a certain part of the area of the screen wasn't working well. So we did some things and this was able to check it out. So you can see here that you can use this to touch everywhere on the real screen. Here's the problem. How do I get out of this? Now that I'm in this, how do I get back to normal operation? So what I'm going to do here is in Crimson, I'm going to go to that touch test page. And over here on the right, if I'm still in bevel button, great. If not, go into bevel button. And I'm going to grab another button. I'll put it right in the middle of this page. And I'm just going to call it exit. And this is going to take me back to my main page, too. So I'm going to right-click on this guy, go to properties. And on the text tab, I'm going to type the word exit here. Or close, leave, whatever. And then uh, let me change the font color. Something. There we go. If I go to the action tab. I'm going to just go go to page, hit the pull down. Oops, let me move this over here so you can see. My top page is called page two. 
So I'm going to pick page two. This is the same as what I did earlier with those buttons uh, on the calibration go to page. I just typed it and then open parentheses this here. You actually have a function you can pull down and choose. So I'll click the OK button. Now I got a button in the middle of the screen here. So now when I use this, just download this and try it out. All right, so we're done downloading here. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my web page for the unit. I'll click the touch tester. And you can see here, I can just click everywhere. Just tap on the screen. I can tell zones working here, where everything works great. When I'm done with this test, I click the edit exit button. And I'm back to the main thing here. So those are two, th two things you can do to do some calibration on your screen. A uh, couple things I will also tell you. Um, when you're doing this and uh, maybe you find that uh, you have some zones here that uh, don't work or something, we have seen situations where the cabinet for a screen, uh, the door is not exactly flat, and we've had people tighten things down so much that it torques the screen just a little bit or bends or, or bends the screen a little bit. So I've told people, go back and loosen some of the bolts that are around here just a little bit. Still make it firm, still have it on the screen, but don't have it tightened down to so far that it's bending the screen so much. You don't have that issue with the graphite screens because they're metal. You can, though, if they were in a stainless steel enclosure, maybe. But uh, maybe with the CR1000 or CR3000 screens, that could be something to also do. So you might want to just slightly loosen these so they're not quite as tight. And that way the screen can be flat on there. It's not being torqued or bent a little bit. And if both of these tests uh, still show to have calibration issues completely, then in that case, I think you'll need to uh, get with your distributor and do an RMA to send that product back to uh, have something looked at the factory. But anyway, those are two things you can do in your Crimson database is add a touch calibration and a touch tester page to test out things on the screen. Hey, thanks a lot, folks. If you want a copy of this database or something, let me know. I'll certainly send it to you, but uh, have yourself a great day. We'll see you later.